Yo, 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 what up? It's your boy Kev. It's your boy Joe. And we are back in the lab. Yes, sir. We're in the lab today. We got a special guest in the building. He is an actor, comedian, writer, producer, director. You will know him from the HBO series The Wire, CW, Everybody Hates Chris. He played Curtis Blow in the BET miniseries, uh, The New Edition Story. He was also nominated for an Emmy in 2018 for Outstanding Actor in a Short Form Drama drama Series for the Eddie, Ro- Eddie Murphy role is Mine, Not Yours, which he also wrote and produced. Mm. Melvin Jackson Jr. Hey. hey, welcome. Thank you. Thank you guys for having welcome me. Welcome to the lab. Melvin, what's good, man? Man, I'm excited, yo. Thank you for having me. Definitely, man. Melvin is a, a big brother figure to me. Absolutely. Mentor. Uh... He's also the CEO of his own production company, which is uh, Urban Vision Entertainment, Fire. which is dope. How I'm gonna just jump right into it. how how important was it to you to you know have your own production well, it company? Was, um, I started out mainly um, when I was younger, managing artists, and um, you know definitely having an entertainment company, something that people could take you serious, was important. You know, um, it went through some name changes, phases, and stuff like that, but uh, finally got it to where I was like Urban Vision Entertainment, just it wasn't based on urban, but it was just I had a vision, and I'm from the urban community, so it just it just clicked, and uh, from that point on, man, just continue to uh, do great things. That's what's important to continue to have content and uh, represent something powerful. Definitely, was it big? Also, just be in control of somewhat your own destiny, absolutely, as, well, as an absolutely. artist, absolutely. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Tell us a little bit. I, I guess I'm really curious. You know, being an actor, what was just the feeling when you got the news that you were nominated for an Emmy? Uh-huh. Off of something that you literally yeah. created. It wasn't like you you were yeah. just performing someone else's idea. It was all you. It, it was it was um it was a sh- and it was a shock, but it was like it was seemed unreal because it was something that I had a vision. I'm like, okay, let me go submit this for an Emmy. Not thinking, oh, it's gonna get nominated for an Emmy, but it was interesting because my wife was also um nominated too. So I went and looked at her name and saw her name nominated. So I called her, I was like, hey babe, you nominated for Emmy. She was like, what about you? I was like, I don't know. And she looked and she's like, yo, you nominated too. So Goals. That's that was dope. just crazy. That's dope. Goals. So which which made us the first African American married couple to be nominated in the same year for Emmy. I, I didn't even know that. Yeah. yeah. That that I was like, what really? I was like, okay. <laughs> That's dope. And you've been with your wife for how long? Oh, about five years. Well, yeah, five years now. And was she in the business before yeah. you got? Yeah, yeah, got yeah. We met we met through a mutual friend and uh she's been in the business for for a minute too. Wow. That's goals. That's yeah. That'd be dope. And I I was reading that uh you started in DC, right? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. that's that's dope. Uh and I would imagine it, it's not a lot of actors or a lot of people in your business as it would be out here in DC. So what made you kind of want to Are you from DC? I'm from DC. Okay. Um lived in Maryland and went overseas for about eight and a half years of my life. Okay. Um yeah, man. Yeah, so uh, so it was kind of different. You were different. Then yeah. a lot of the people you grew up with wanting to get in the film, wanting to get right. in management and all that type of stuff. Where'd you get that from? Um, I, I think for me, it's just like I saw m- so many people uh, uh, die and, and things that, mm-hmm. that, that happened in, the, in you know, my community that I know that I wanted to, to give myself an a, a opportunity to, to live out my dreams and also have something for my kids. So mm-hmm. I knew that. Once I knew I was in the music, and then as I got transferred over to acting, I was like, "It's either L.A. or New York." And New York mm. was, you know, was more of like theater and stuff like that. So I was like, "Let me go to L.A. Let me see, get my feet wet." And I went out to L.A. and I was like, "Yeah, me and L.A. just clicked." And the, you know, the rest was history. And I just continued to build relationships out here. And it's mm. just like, now it's been about what 14 years, 15, 13, 14 years. I've been out of L.A. and it's just like, wow. You know, LA's just adopted me, and I'm, I feel like this is this is definitely my my second home, my my second homecoming, and just it's a blessing, man. That's dope. That's what's up. Okay. Um, as an actor, something I I don't even think that I've actually asked you, just in our conversations, how long did it take you from your first audition, your first swing at this, to actually hit something? I would say, like how long were you in the trenches, really? Like it was, man. God, like God is amazing. Um, I actually. I, I didn't have any acting experience, and I was w- with this modeling agency, and my first like audition for acting, anything acting was for PSA, and I booked it. And from that point on, I was like, okay, this is something I can see myself doing. I'm like, it's fun. I get paid. And then from there, I auditioned for a few other things, and I think like every, um, America's Most Wanted, I got re- um, casted for that. 
And um, the next thing after that was The Wire kind of continued to, to audition, but I was an extra first. Um, so I think I would ask you a question. The first, the first time I auditioned was actually the first time I booked something, which wow. was which is pretty, you know, pretty amazing. That's, and that's and that's rare in this business. A lot of people, two, three, four, five years, yeah. and it, and it might be something minute. I mean, yeah. you touching on you 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 booked the wire. What was that experience like? Because I feel like everybody knows the wire, <laughs> and, and everybody was in it. Edith yeah, Elba, yeah, Michael like, B. Jordan. Everybody knows the wire. If especially if you're in urban culture, yeah, and somewhat like, what was that experience for you getting that news? You know that you booked it and just being on set, stuff yeah. like that. Man, it was amazing because it was one of my favorite shows, and um, you know I was trying to get on the show, and long story short, I they kept hitting me up to be an extra, and I was like an extra, you know, and I was like how much? And it was like fifty dollars for eight hours. I was like, yeah, I gave me what that on my job. I'm good. <laughs> wow, fifty dollars yeah. for eight and hours. And what, what year was that? Oh, man, uh, two. Th- 2001, 2002, something like that. That's crazy. Um, and so I, I kept saying no, and after the third time, I was like, well, maybe this is God testing me. I don't know. Let me say yes. I'm going to say yes. Uh, I did it. I'm glad I did. Me and Wood Harris, we we connected over Wood music Harris. stuff, exchanged numbers, and just being able to talk to each cast member, man, was like dope. And then I started auditioning for the show, and I auditioned for like season one, season two, and then season three came around. 15 auditions later, I finally booked the role of Bernard, and I remember going into the callback um, with the producer and the casting director, and the casting director stopped me, Pat Moran casting. She was like, um, do exactly what you did the other day. You got this. And I feel like this character was me. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I got this. And so I went in there for the um, Dave Simon and all of them, and the rest was history. I called, um, got a call. I was at work um, in like caf- cafeteria, and I got a call saying, you know, you booked the role. And I, you thought I won a lottery because I was like, oh, my God. Like, oh, people looking at me. I was I, like, <laughs> and then I was it's crazy. I was telling people I was I was on it, booking it, on it. So every week they look for me. They're like, man, I ain't see you on there. You lying. I'm like, listen, I'm I don't not, have to lie about being yeah. on the show. This is You're you going to see it. So when I finally, I stopped sell, telling people because you never know. Mm-hmm. And so when they finally saw me, they like, oh, you on it? And I was like, I see you. I told you. And it was like. <laughs> <laughs> man, it was just an amazing experience that I still keep in contact with those, um, you know, the cast members. And um, Brandon Fowler is one of my, my best friend, my brother. He he played on the uh, show as um, Fruit, and we're all we're all cool. When we see each other, it's all love. That's dope, and that's that's an example of you know be being grateful for your your small blessings. You know, you took the extra role. You almost didn't take it, and you yeah. took it as a as a sign from God, and you were like, and then you were blessed, obviously, Absolutely. with the with a bigger role. Um, in the film industry right now, man, one thing that I, I've always been curious, and especially since you're very seasoned in it, do you think the era of the the superstar is dead due to you know the multiple platforms and there's in comparison to maybe like '90s, early you had the Denzel Washingtons, mm-hmm. the Will Smith. I mean, those like they they those were the headliners right. for for artists. Now there's so many more platforms across the board. Do you think it's harder to be that? Do you think there's not going to be as much money made as they did because of the multiple platforms that there is, and there's multiple opportunities for other stars? Like there's basically there's more people in the pool now. Right. Do you think do you think that's something, or do you think? I, I mean, I think that I mean, if you're a star, you're a star. I mean, I think your star power is is what you built, and I think it's kind of always be there if you're that person like if you're Denzel you know you make 20 30 million a, 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 a movie you're gonna still make that but what I say is everyone's a star it's all about how far you want to go mm-hmm. and there's so many people that are just unknown that are, are dope some of the dopest people actors that you could imagine that are not even seen yet so it's just um for me is I get to look I look to see the I get to see the star then I get to see the people who are stars that you don't know about and so that's a beautiful thing it's just like that's why as a producer, like I'm willing, I wanted to just ke- continue to create opportunities because these people are so amazing that I think that the world needs to see them. And it's not for me, it's, for us, I think it's not always about the money, it's about the longevity because you can make the money in the beginning, but then what about the longevity? When you, you, you see people where they're like, man, in the beginning they were like making movies left and right, now you don't see them. They can't even get, you know, they can't even get a one liner. Yeah. So it's all about making sure that you do the right projects that, that build your longevity because the money will be there. But it's about how you how you build your legacy. Got you. My best legacy is big. Yeah. Um. So on the lab, man, we cover 
Hoops culture fashion. Mm-hmm. I see you got a Lakers hat on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all looking good right now. There, yeah. There's no denying who you're rocking with. <laughs> yeah. you, you like what you see so far? I like what I see. It's a couple things. It's a couple turnovers they were doing in game three. I was just like, man, y'all had 24 turnovers? Like, yeah. it was crazy. Um, one game they had like 16. It was like, you can't play around with Denver. Mm-hmm. So I, I get so caught up in it where it's just like I have to calm myself down. It's like, it's just a game. But I'm so I'm so passionate about you know the sport and I'm a, a former athlete so it's just like I you get so caught up in it where it's like they mm-hmm. they can't hear you yeah. you're yelling at the TV they can't hear you but right. um, I understand the pressure that it that it takes as a as a um, professional athlete but I'm definitely you know loving what I see in my Lakers and uh, we gotta do it for Kobe man facts uh, Kobe and Gigi you know they you got I mean obviously you rocking with them going all the way yeah I, I think they're going all the way I, now when I see this where we're at. I think the Lakers got it. They got to take care of business. One more. You know, one more, and we, we can focus on, you know, is it Boston or Miami. But do you think them other two teams on the on the, on the the east side even stay in the chain? I mean, not being biased because you're a fan, but. I, I do. I, I think they, man, you know, everybody wants it. And, you know, I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing from Jimmy Butler. I'm loving what I'm seeing from Bam. Um, the younger hero, you know. Mm-hmm. Hero's um, tough. Mm-hmm. Hero's Boston, tough. Boston should be up like 2-1 two, right now. Two, two, two. It should be a tie. Boston had the two first two games, but they. Then capitalize off of um, stand putting their foot on the gas. That's the thing. It's like you get, teams will be up, but then they lax and they'll everyone will get cold. And it's like there's no LA almost did that last. Yeah, night. there's no role players. It's like who else is gonna take take over? And Marcus Smart, man, he's he's been efficient. Like he had one game where he was, but he had the boards. He didn't have the points. Mm-hmm. But Marcus Smart has been like that third the third guy when Kimba wasn't able to do it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, man, it's it's it's, it's, it's gonna be a good one. Was you were you always a Lakers fan since day one? Or you were walking the Wizards? I, I was walking. No, I was walking the, the Chicago Bulls. They went uh, there. Yeah, so Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Scottie Pippen. You know. Yeah, I mean it's hard not to be. A yeah, Jordan, especially man. yeah, yeah. It's crazy as a kid watching watching those games, man. Like I remember me and my pops, like we were watching, we were in the hotel watching, and it's just. Those, those experiences, and then the last dance come on, and it's like, oh, I'm taking you back. The last dance oh. like rekindled my love for Michael Jordan. Man, <laughs> I was like, Facts. that's crazy. So, what sports did you play growing up? I played um, basketball. I, my 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 sports that I was the best in were like um, wrestling, and I did track and field. I got a gold oh, wow. medal in track and field and a bronze in, um, in wrestling. Um, oh wow! Like, like long long distance running was my thing. This guy's had a, a long rest. Man, yeah, listen, yeah. Like God, man, God is good, man. Like so God. don't so don't run up on him. <laughs> Facts. He can wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my big fears. Is that like I get into it with somebody that's like a he knows UFC. what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that's why I don't that's t- why I peep uh, the ears when I'm like, oh, what? right, oh, okay. But and you wouldn't expect you wouldn't expect him though exactly. because he everything's all good. He's a smile from ear to ear, yeah. like. Put you in an arm lock. <laughs> have your shit popped out of socket. <laughs> <laughs> and then you you lived in Turkey. Yeah, Pakistan and Turkey. That's what was that like? It was a man. It was amazing. It was I opened it. It it opened so many like doors for me in a sense of like being able to be around multicultural people. Like you know the thing is one thing when you're only able to be around just your people, black and African American. But when you're able to be around different cultures and you interact with them and it's all love. It's a beautiful thing, and so mm-hmm. it, I didn't. I didn't grow up even knowing about like races and cu- racism and color and all that stuff like that. It was just like that's my friend, you know. You are who you are. So, yeah. um, it was a beautiful thing, man. I, it changed my life forever. Did you ever? Did you experience? I, this might be a crazy question. Did you experience any racism towards you when you went to Turkey? Was there nah. any like? Nah, and my, was there any, wasn't nothing like that? That's nah, man. Like America for them was like the the land of the like it was like the land of the gold. It was like I'm gonna go to man. America, yeah. So yeah. it's like to make them America was cool. And once we got to know them, it was like love. It was all love. And so just to, but I just saw how they lived, man, over there, and it was it made me appreciate like my my privilege, what you know, if you want to call it. So it's like to see them having to wash up um, in the same water they got to drink. All, all it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's humbling. Yeah, yeah, it's very humbling. And I, and I would say, since you didn't experience that, did you notice the difference when you came back? Uh, nah. Not like, really? That, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't have any of those, those stories, man. And yeah. I, I don't know if that's just, you know, me being blessed. That's, it's just the simply fact of the energy I put out. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I, I agree with you on that. It is relative to some people, but... What's your what's your take on like uh, the Breonna Taylor situation and everything that's going on? With it's now? it's sad, man, because mm-hmm. um, you know these are people that um, didn't get to live life. You know, mm-hmm. here I am, thirty nine, and I'm like, man, like there's somebody that didn't get to see twenty five, twenty six, whoever. Facts. You know, mm-hmm. and so 
life is precious. You don't know. That could be me. That could be you. That could have been your daughter, your son, you know, whoever. Mm -hmm. And so it, it just makes you realize, one, how, how precious life is, but then two, how much we got to continue to keep living for those that are not living right now. Mm. And um, I don't I don't know how many marches we can do, how much we can protest, um, but it's got to change by the people we put in office. Like they said, mm -hmm. legislation, uh, legislative. Um, so I'm still learning myself. It's like yeah. I'm not an activist at all, but it's like right. I'm activated to just Learn. get aware. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's like you can't tell me that a person get to get charged for shooting through a wall but not get charged for shooting right. a person in their home. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all these gray areas. There's like things that can be justified. Oh, they justify because if I put, as long as I put my gun at you, I'm justified for shooting you. That's mm -hmm. what they said. Like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, and it's like, if somebody's busting in your house and you say, who is it? And they don't know, like, you can't say, well, I'm going to wait till they come in right. to before <laughs> I shoot. Or if you, you know, you're a black man, you're like, where's somebody coming to rob me? Yeah. And I think it's like the laws. By law, I'm thinking you, you can technically. You can't shoot somebody into you know that's through your door because you don't know who it is really. Mm -hmm. So you if they're in your home and you're you know they're uh, you know trying to break in or whatever, then you have the right. So mm -hmm. there's all these little gray areas as as a homeowner and as a person. The, that's the main thing conservatives <laughs> fight for is like you know being able to defend yourself, having guns, yeah, and ha have yeah. a gun in your yeah. house. Yeah. If something happened like that, it's a sad situation. Yeah. It's a sad situation. It's crazy to see because they just announced something that no one. One one person was indicted. Yeah. One one person was indicted, and he was indicted for the bullets that that actually the, missed her. Yeah, and I think almost endangered somebody yeah, else next door. Yeah, yeah next, that's they, why. That's neighbors. why. So yeah, it's messed up, man. And I, I, what I guess if you had to, if obviously none of us have the answer, but for you, Melvin, if you had to propose something, what do you think would be? What is a step towards change? You think, in your opinion, this is your opinion. I, I think it's simply having a huge powwow with the powers to be and saying okay guys enough is enough we need to make things change mm -hmm. for the better because mm -hmm. we are supposed to be united as a country but we're falling apart mm -hmm. we're divided right. all the way you know because we have someone in office that says one thing and then now you have to have somebody in their other office they try to come up and clean it when it's mm -hmm. like no they said what they said they meant what they said mm -hmm. he said that if he doesn't make he doesn't get elected for president He's not leaving peacefully. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Yeah. That that man has said things, and you have to believe what he he said. And so, mm -hmm. um, it starts at the top. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's so many contradictions. Like you, like there's exactly. so many people going against. How, I haven't seen so many people going against the president like ever. In my, in, ever. Mm -hmm. So it's like, who is in charge here? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's higher than the president? Because I, yeah, the president. I feel like for our country, the president is a spokesperson. Yeah. And I feel like the Congress and the Senate. Absolutely. Is what really holds the power. Absolutely, they do. Is that's and I feel that's where the change needs to be. Yet, we those people sit in those chairs for 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. and we don't have no. There hasn't been a change, but yet we always point to the person, whether it's Obama, Trump, Bush, <laughs> whoever. We point the finger at them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But and I think I think it's more so the narrative that he puts out. That's that's where that's where it's like we continue to talk about that. And other things get o overlooked, but it's definitely, definitely the Congress and the Senate. But I think people get so comfortable in their position and comfortable in their life that if it doesn't affect them directly, they're not going to yeah. go out and, and they're not going to go out at their way to make. It's like if you're living in your mansion and you're talking about poverty in mm. another country, if it doesn't affect you, it doesn't really. It, that, you, you right, go back that's, to that's, that's fact because I've said that I've I, and I, I I can sit here and admit that I've said that. I was like I don't I don't usually get I don't get into too many hashes and stuff about the presidency because. What they're talking about between now Trump, Obama, and Bush, like just that I have the recollection, none of their decisions really affected my life personally. Right. It's all been the same, honestly. Clinton, it, it, Bush, it, it, it's all been the same. Now, now I, I, now that I've done some research, I, I learned about how they're taxing a higher class and things like yeah. that. But again, I'm not making <laughs> four hundred plus thousand a year, so right. it's not again affecting me. But maybe I think, and I think that's a lot of people. Maybe we got to come outside of that shell. And and I don't know. Do we ride for it stronger? It's just again, and then they'll look at us. We're like, we're not even talking about you. We're not trying to yeah. bother you. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's it's a, it's a tough push and pull situation. But again, my my me doing research, I'm like the change has to come. I think higher up than the president. Yeah, That's just I, I think that I think yeah. I don't think you should be able to sit in those seats longer than five and, to six years. And honestly, my biggest thing is ignorance. I think the ignorance and within a lot of a people, black or white, has to change. There's both. There's both. ignorance on both sides. Yeah. And I think once that 
kind of dwindles down, then we could kind of really handle the situation because I see some of these white people and I, and I, that are like you know hardcore against the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm like, bro, you just can't. You don't know how to uh, sympathize or, or empathetic mm-hmm. with something that hasn't happened to you. Because right. like, it doesn't mean that your life doesn't matter. But right. right now we're focusing on this. That's like me trying to tell a girl that's been raped. Like, well, women rape women too, or yeah, like, yeah. You or, know rape, what I'm saying? or like, rape men too. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like I gotta be sympathetic to you because that and I believe I've never seen you get raped. Yeah, but I believe that happens. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it doesn't happen. And some women do lie about it. You know yeah. what I mean? But at the end of the day, I can't be insensitive to the subject. And there. I think it's the uh, vice versa. There, there's a lot of insensitivity on both sides, for sure. Both sides. It's a privilege, man. It's the simple fact that, you know, people are raised a certain way and they have a certain mm-hmm. way of thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's when it's like they say when a person gets a certain age, it's hard to change their mind frame. Yeah. And that's what it is. You know, it's it's by default that they think this way because it's how they were raised. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was ingrained I'm in superior them. to you. Right. Why you, Why is that? Th- why is it that you think you're superior over me? Mm-hmm. We brought you to this world. Preach. We right. gave you whatever. You, you know, and it's just like you know, you took you us from took where us. we were. Yeah. But well, what's and crazy <laughs> is this is not even when 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 people say stuff like that or go back to where you can't. This isn't even a, you, the white you, country. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The like, native, exactly. And, exactly. And people fail to, to realize that, and that's ignorance and how they were brought up. It's it, there. There is a mess. I do think there are. I, I, I I'm not gonna say this. I want to think there's more good than bad, but yet we highlight. The, the bad, bad apples because it does so more, it gets more attention, it causes up a stir. It's definitely and, and, more and good you, than bad. Right, and you good you say that because I was thinking like, think about this. It was about four years ago, Carlin Kaepernick took a knee, took mm-hmm. a knee for for what we're going through right exactly right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This dude stood up for something that he believed in. And now he hasn't never not, not played one snap in the NFL since then. Mm-hmm. Now it's okay for them to kneel. Mm-hmm. Now they understand. Mm-hmm. But if you understand, this man still is not playing. And there's pe- there's there's quarterbacks getting hurt right now, and there's quarterbacks that are playing that are not better than. And that are worse than yeah, exactly. You know, I'm sure he can. He's be- he's I don't know. definitely good enough to so, make an NFL. And this roster. is supposed to be the country that's, that's, of freedom of speech and, yeah. and and it's a lot of lip service. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. they, they they came NFL came out and did all, but they only did that because of Patrick Mahomes and all the 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 star the names that that, the face that of came the league, out because right? yeah. they had no choice. They had no choice. But I feel like if Colin was a, a, a Patrick Mahomes or somebody like that. He wouldn't have paid the price that he paid for one because he didn't have a, wasn't having a great season. He mm-hmm. was he was kind of wasn't he was on the, the decline, right? He was yeah. You know they, the they 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 use him and it's like people was like, well, why couldn't other people players come to his aid? And I was like, I understand that, but other people have lot li- livelihoods. They got families they got to take care of. So mm-hmm. I, I get it. They're not gonna say, well, if he don't play, we don't play. Mm-hmm. Like it's hard for some it, people. It, it may be for you know because it's like majority of the NFL is African American, so it's like everyone came collectively, and that's like yeah, that's hard to get everybody on board because it's like we got to make sure that we we understand the same message because mm-hmm. everybody wasn't on the same board at that point. They didn't understand. Yeah. Um. And so now you see it more, and you're like, okay, enough is enough. And now you're, the NFL is gonna be like, okay, we're gonna allow, allow the stadiums to be used for voting polls, and then NBA we're gonna. Allow, it's like why does all this have to happen even with George Floyd? For now, it'd be like, oh, now we get it. Yeah, mm-hmm. y'all haven't been getting it for the, this whole other the time last that this five, happened. Six years, yeah. We're I mean, seeing and longer than that. We're obviously. seeing people that look like us being killed on video. Like this is now. Yeah. Uh, this is social media. It's just like blowing up. It's like, am I watching a show? Am I watching a syndicated show? Yeah. Right. I am right. tired, man. Yeah, it is crazy. Do you think? Do you think the because there are so many going on now? Is that why there was the the footage? You think more foot? I mean, because there was Rodney King footage mm. back in whenever that. But yeah. like, you think it's because it's more prevalent now? There's more social media platforms. That's that's obviously it. Because if it wasn't, it would still be able to. They would still be able like to be deny it. it, or 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 like, oh well, he hit us first, or oh well, he had drugs on him, oh well, he yeah, shot some. No video you know what I mean? It would be no video proof. I think <clears throat> now is is so prevalent because people can actually see it and say. Wow, you know what I mean? Like mm. the 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 people that have some type of sense could say, okay, well, he shot this dude in the back seven times. He was walking. Why away was he from not the... tased? Yeah. Exactly. You know I, I, mean? I say that a lot for a lot of these shootings and things. You mm-hmm. have other forces before you let them bullets fly. Mm-hmm. And, and and this is the I think this is the the double edged sword is that with everything being recorded, police are under so much scrutiny. You mm-hmm. know, like even if That's you make, even if you make the right move and the other people are oh they make oh he should have did something else. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's no telling what we would have done in those situations. Be, be, I mean, I definitely understand what the uh, 
um, that you, he shouldn't have got shot in the back for seven times. But I saw a video the other day where the two officers were fighting a guy, and he said he's trying to grab my gun. And if you're trying to grab your gun, you're you're you're, you're you can sh you yeah. can shoot them because they're trying yeah. to grab their gun. So I'm, if I see nothing person, wrong, I'm, I see um, nothing wrong with that. If you trying, and, 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 trying to grab and, your gun. and then they're trying to you know administer CPR. So I've seen. Uh, that is different than I've seen where somebody gets shot and they don't even touch him. They don't even and do they, anything. Or they arrest him while he's been shot yeah. and rolling him over. There are, there, yeah. 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 And again, those bad seeds tend to be the face of what we see. Just, right. just like, and that, just, and like, just for us too. Yeah, I was just about to us. say. That. I was just about to say. Just for the we black. have bad seeds that you know make it bad for us. Yeah. Like, like I was just trying to say, like the women, you know, some women lie about being raped. They make it bad for yeah. the ones that are actually being raped. Very right. true. And. There's a lot of ignorance that goes on in our community as well that makes it bad for us, and they highlight that. They highlight that, and I would like to say it's not as much as, it, as you think, as you would think, yeah. but it's there, and that it's up to those people to w wake up and recognize. Okay, I am not helping the narrative. I'm not helping it. I'm actually hurting it. Mm. I gotta chill. I gotta grow up because it's crazy. And speaking of that, what you think of this uh, Tory Lanez? Mega yeah, I was about to say that touches right on this. <laughs> Um, she comes out and says she she got shot in the foot by Tory. Mm -hmm. Everyone slanders this dude, drops him off songs, runs his name through the mud. Why isn't Tory speaking up? Blah 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 blah. Well, I think like most people, you wouldn't speak on some a certain thing when it's fresh. Right. He drops an album last night, mm -hmm. and he goes into deep deep detail. Says he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. What happened? Why are these people acting like this? This and that. It's crazy. So, so are I'm, you? Are you? 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 You think Tory didn't do it? I. I don't. I don't think Tory did it, and I'm only saying this because I'm not saying he didn't do anything, but to the extent of what she said, because why would she he, lie about getting shot though? And that's a good point. And if okay, so and why would he go to the extent that he's doing if 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 it's gonna come out that Tory Lanez you did it? Because he's trying to he's trying to get that smut off his name. He's trying to get all of that but dirt but, off his name. And this is what I always say, you know, this is what I was, my two cents. I say there's three sides. There's his yeah, side, her yeah, side, and, and the, the truth. truth. Yeah. And so I don't, you know, I can't speak on it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I always say like there's people who have done murders and, and rap about it. So that's true. Very true. Like, exactly. I'm gonna leave that right there. I just thought in this day and age, <laughs> that's, it's, that's it's, it's I don't think I in this that's true, but in this day and age, I don't know if we have anybody that would do that. And it's Tory Lanez the person. You don't know. Was. It's a lot of a lot of people who like look at I me and look at Bobby Smurder. If and if I'm yeah. just saying, if he shot it, and why is he? It's like what what lane could he take? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like what can he do? No does he intended. remain? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> can, does he remain silent and then everybody slanders him? Everybody hits him. He stop. They stop his money. Or do you drop an album? Say you're innocent and make money off of it. None of us were there. I don't know what happened. All I know is it doesn't make sense to accuse someone of shooting you. Right, we got that didn't she, shoot you. <laughs> we got it, and, and it mean, and for me, I would say it wasn't like she came out uh, uh, immediately and said anything about it. Yeah, it was it, a while before people was actually trolling her when you know, yeah, and then yeah. supposedly his publicist was saying something. So it's it was just it's a it's a sketchy story. Then she didn't it didn't come out right away. Mm -hmm. Then she just got shot in the foot. But then the pro the week after she's performing, nothing, no bone, no bones or anything were broken in your foot. Then Tori comes out. And drops a detailed album. It's just, it's a mess. But it's another thing too. It's like I've never been shot. I don't know if you guys have. Been, so it's like I can't say. Yeah, I've never you know been shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, what I mean, there's been people who got shot and then miss every yeah that's important argument. So went, yeah, if you're blessed, you're blessed. So it's like I can't. I mean, I'm not gonna like say I, I don't want to sit and debate and lie. I mean, it's about oh shoot, that's not that's not that's there's bigger there's bigger situations that that need my attention. Right. Mm -hmm. And I understand like we get caught up in what's going on and we get drawn in, but it's like. At the, end of, at the end of the day, a man, a male and a female had a situation. Mm -hmm. Whether he did it or not, it's not. It's, the main thing is not. It's not. It's not right to put your hand on a woman. It's mm -hmm. not right to harm a woman. Amen. Like that's not. There's nothing to cool about that. To even be in a situation yeah, like that is is already you already going down the wrong path. And y'all making so much money, you living life. You, it shouldn't even. You should be thinking about positive stuff and helping others. And that's what the you situation know, is yeah, sticky. Yeah, the si situation shouldn't even have got this sticky. Uh, you know what I mean? People look up to you, whether you know it or not. So you got to, you know what I mean? Facts. And I want to put some out there real quick. It's like, because, of course, we, you know, you hear Chris Brown's name getting thrown in. And it's like, what I, what I, what bothers me, uh -oh. what bothers <laughs> me is that, you know, not to make an excuse for it, but Chris Brown was 18. Rihanna, they were young people. This oh, happened so true. many years yeah. ago when it happened. 
you heard her, you, you really didn't hear her, I mean you heard the side of a story from her but then you also saw the side of him when he did the documentary, the documentary yeah. where it was both of them that, that that were involved but it's like how long will we continue to 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 make him suffer for something he did he made a mistake he owned that he made a mistake um but what about other people who've done it we don't we don't hear their stuff be, could constantly be in, their name being brought up, but it's like, is it because Chris Brown has maybe a bad attitude sometimes or whatever it may be that it's like... The talent and the success. It's it, it's it's like people continue to keep throwing that out to Rihanna, uh, Chris Brown. That's not the only domestic violence situation. Yeah, it's just, it's, I think it's because he's still able to, he's able almost damn near to shake it and still succeed and sell records. But I mean, he's not boasting about it. That's the thing. It's not, he's not no, like saying, I'll be, you know, it's like he... That, they, that they, was his, that was his friend. They're they're reconciled. They're, they patched they're, it up. Yeah, and, he, and he's paid his he's paid his dues. I mean, yeah, that was he lost. That was in two thousand eight. Yeah, he, you know nine. he he lost like, out. He didn't just wait. I mean, it's like that's yeah. a stigma. Oh, he, that, got, he got canceled for like a year. Yeah. Blackball. Nobody was selling records. They no concerts. But I think, the I good, think he made a good point. Is that he was eighteen. A lot of people make mistakes when they're young. Not even just like you know abuse or whatever that is called. Yeah, but uh. A lot of people make mistakes when they're young, and you know it's about the people that can change and recognize they made the mistake. Exactly. So, and look where we are now. I mean, for him, he's thirty something years old. I don't. Yeah. I'm not saying he's perfect, but damn. Yeah. Same thing for Tori. As long I hope, as he's I, not smacking uh, bitches up, we're good. <laughs> yeah, I hope. I hope they uh, get through that. Um, yeah. He meant to say females, but yeah, uh, my bad. <laughs> 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 but as long as you're not putting your hands on them now, you, you're like we're good, bro. Like, yeah, Melv. Uh, what's what's you got? Any, what's up? What's cooking with you right now? What's what's in the what's in, what's happening in your world? What do you? I know you're producing something. Man, working on something. Um, I'm I'm fin- we're finishing up editing a domestic violence documentary. Um, called I'm not a uh, survivor, no longer a victim. Wow. Um, and that came about, man, just because. It's it's interesting because I'm I'm not you know documentary is not really my thing and that t- subject is not something that I specialize on no but I went to an event the gen- at the Genesis Center um they had an event and Holly Holly Berry's a ambassador for them and just hearing these women's story of survival and like seeing one woman who was uh, had acid thrown on her by her somebody her husband sent somebody to throw acid on her wow. um and her daughter fell in and just to hear that story and see her disfigured like broke my heart and I'm like as a male. How can I be part of the solution and not, yeah. you know, just part of the problem? And so, I, I, I just said I wanted to start going, after, you know, talking to survivors and getting their story. And it was hard in the beginning trying to get people to to, to feel comfortable telling stories, but afterwards I put it out there. People just kept, you know, it was like hit me up, like I got you. And um, just to watch these stories, man, it's just heartbreaking. But I know that it's gonna heal people, and people right. have healed from telling their story. Even I have a a, a man, a male in there who tells his story about being abused and being molested by, you know, an older guy. So. Wow. Um, it's mm-hmm. definitely, it's definitely, um, going to be therapeutic for a lot of people, man. If not, definitely for me, for sure. Um, to, that's dope. Just seeing, just seeing what they went through and seeing how strong they are. And that's, those are stories I think need to be told. One thing I think that you represent that I've always, that ever since I first, you know, heard about your stories, you got, you're, you're, you're a product of perseverance. You came out here, made it. And I remember the, the first time I heard you speak, you talked about, be going back home, yeah. you ha- you had to go back home. Mm-hmm. You literally rode the roller coaster of this industry. I think if mm-hmm. anybody has, what kept you? What kept that fire burning in you that up and coming actors can look at, your peers can look at and take away? What is? What was the driving factor for you never to quit? Because you had many moments where you right. could have quit. What was? What what kept you going? Man, the simple fact I even just went had to go back into when I was seventeen and I had my first son. Man, like just being a single father at seventeen, like the odds were against me. You know, simply like I could have been a statistic, and um, I had a great support system, and I've always had a great support system. So I understood like my relationship with God is like, if you know that you've hit a wall, and you continue to still keep driving that wall, then you haven't got it. You haven't you haven't woken up and see there is a reason that wall is right there. It's not meant for you to go do right now and you gotta you haven't figured out how to go around it mm-hmm. so for me it's just like i had to regroup and say you know what this is not working for me i can't live like this you know being you know unemployment checks and then making you know my family have to stuff in the process i can't do it so i went back home got nine to five and then transferred out here with the job it was like i gotta have a plan because you come out here i don't want to be a struggle knocker i'm gonna stand i'm staying on people's couches can't really pay them because I gotta pay my rent back home, mm-hmm. so it's like it's not their problem, but it's like they're being nice about it. But it's just like I don't like being anyone's burden. 
Mm. And I didn't, didn't I didn't like having to continue to depend on somebody. And I remember it was one time I came back from I came from LA, I mean, came back from uh, Maryland, and the person I, place I was staying with, they had somebody else staying on the couch. So it's like now I'm I don't have no place to stay. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. I, my stuff is still there, mm-hmm. but I go back there and it's like <clears throat> somebody else is staying on the couch. And I was like I can't be mad because I get I me mean, that person paying. Yeah, facts. But it's just like that's the situation I was in. I put myself in, in having to stay at this person, this person when I have a home. Mm-hmm. Like that's crazy, right? When you're homeless. But you have a home but you really got back a home. Yeah. You so make was, it sacrifice. That was the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this is something gotta change. And that's not and that's and that has to be a hard decision, probably in that moment, to be like, I gotta go back home. It was. And I had to get pride out of the way. Because it's that's like for me, is, yeah. my best friend told me he was like, Man, look, this industry will always be here, but your family won't. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, at the time I was I was married, my my first marriage, and I had kids. And so it was like I had to be there for my kids because I'm living my dream. Saying that I'm doing it for us, but it's really for me. And mm-hmm. I had to, that was a hard pill to swallow. Like, I'm doing it for us, but it's really doing it for me because they're not seeing the, the benefit of it right now. They're, they're, only, they're only getting the, that I'm not there. They're mm-hmm. only getting the, 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 uh, the late payments, the, you know, possibly having your car repossessed, like those things. And I was like, I don't want to put my family through that any longer. So I, I, I regrouped, and, and it worked out. Respect. Because... I think a lot of people looking in when they think that you've made it on TV with mm-hmm. your set. Man. <laughs> and that's not it. That's not it. Absolutely I, not. <laughs> could you, I mean, when you have your, when you probably, like like you said, you got to swallow your pride. Your peers are looking at you like, yo, I just seen you on the wire, but mm-hmm. you coming back to the crib. Can you maybe break down? Like, that's not how it always is. Unless you're like a, a series regular. Right. Constantly, like yeah. it, it ain't, it isn't like that, and I think that's one. St- I think that's one stigma for people looking from the outside in on acting and stuff. That just because you make it on television, don't mean you got the the commas <laughs> in the bank account. You got the cribs, that, right. and you're not guaranteed to be on the next episode. Absolutely. And what, what? So, y- you know, your family was your driving factor, and then once you got back out here, I mean, obviously, I know you're deeply rooted in God. Mm-hmm. That had to be your number one motivate. Like absolutely, that yeah. was your go to. Yeah, because it was you know being an actor, you think it's about you, and so I remember you know kind of like going about like you want to do the red carpet this and that, and God's like it's not a, you know he's like I was like I'm ready, God. He was like no, you're not. You're not ready. I'm like what do you mean? I'm like I'm ready. He's like I, I was like I want this opportunity, and he was like nah, you're not ready. And I'm like well if I mess up, I'll get another opportunity. But it's like who says you're gonna get another opportunity? So it's not it's not about you. It's what you can do for other people. So. Facts. When I t- started changing my mind frame and saying, you know, it's not just about Melvin. It's about how I, I impact other people's lives. It, you know, whether it's something I say, something I do. And that became my mission. Like, how can I create something that me and my friends can do or me and somebody else can can all capitalize, capitalize off of? And it just became bigger. It came bigger than just about me. And, and so um, things just started opening up, man. Like, people will do for you. Be, when they believe in you, like when they believe in something that's bigger than just you, when it's just like, oh, it's me, me, me. Like I don't, you know me. I don't try to take credit for things that I do. I'm like, man, it's all God. Like I get it because Facts. it's like, even though I know that I, I did the work, yeah. but it, it comes from a higher source, and um, mm-hmm. I understood where I was, and when it was like, when you hot, you always get hot. Like they say, what? Like, uh, it's like when you hot, you get everything: shoes, car, you know, clothes, whatever. Everybody wants you being stuff. When you ain't got nothing going on. And like, ah, oh, holler at me when you when you got something, when you book something. Like, I've never been a serious regular before. I've been on shows, but I've never been a serious regular before. Don't know what that paycheck looks like. But I got that chance to see like people that's my friends that's on it and see like that process and see that payment. But it's just like, I imagine what they're getting as an actor. I can imagine what I'm I'll be getting as a producer. So I'm mm. thinking I'm thinking bigger. Like I'm thinking as a producer, not just an actor. So I'm like, that's big. Let me get those checks. Let me let me get. Those opportunities so that I can be like, yo, Kev, or yo, yo, Joe. Like, I, I want to be able to put my, my folks in this and stuff, uh, be able to hire amazing people. Mm-hmm. And as an actor, you can't do that. So my mindset has to change from being just a player to now being a boss. And that's big. That's, dope. that's thinking on the next level. Yeah. And a lot of people don't want to think like that. Mm-hmm. Or, or can't. Simple-minded. Yeah. yeah, they just, like you said, being an, as an actor, you don't have a lot of control mm-hmm. unless you are... <laughs> mm-hmm. Those right. top tier yeah. mm-hmm. people, but you want to get into Wahala? Yeah, so, and then we got know. we got a game called Wahala. We gonna play yeah. <laughs> before uh, we, we gotta before have some we, fun before we close out. You get the first one. Or you want me to go? What you, y'all you, talk you, about? Black, do we gonna talk about Chad? Chad with Bozeman? 
real, um, real, real quick. We definitely oh, can. Yeah. We can. We, we can. can. We, we can. can. Uh, I that, think, yeah. Man, that hurt. That so hurt. let's talk about Chadwick. Then, yeah, man. we'll do that. Chadwick, for me, that was somebody I looked up to. Man, I had him written on my vision. I had these visions, the three hundred visions. Like, cause y'all I, met him. Y'all too. Yeah, yeah. We met him. We got yeah. to meet him. I wanted to. I literally had on the thing before I met him. Before we met him. Uh, play a supporting role to Chaslin Bozeman. Mm. I would all that was a that was a thing of mine before I even knew we come into contact with him. We got to meet him, dude. It was probably one of the most surreal moments. We talk about it all the time. <laughs> We've met a lot of people, mm-hmm. and he at his stature compared to anybody else that we've met, he's one. He was one of a kind. Mm. The humbleness, the uh, the genuine, uh, facts. authentic. When you're speaking to him, he is an enga- he is engaged and cares about what you're saying and mm-hmm. wanted to know. Wanted to know how he could help you eat just mentally. Right. It, it was one of a kind. And we in Joe Joe was questioning like, yo, why is this dude like this? Mm. All the time. We never knew what he was battling behind the right. scenes. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that was his motivation. Right. I think being, that's just his spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I'm not trying to say that. That's that whole southern North Carolina, you know, yeah. that vibe. But man, it was just I, I'll never forget it. It yeah. that that is a moment in my life that no one could take away. And I mean, I'm sure Joe could kind of speak on it as well. It was just yeah, was, for me, it was just like he he actually changed my thinking without me even really talking to him as much. It's just being close by him, mm-hmm. and I, I I observed him, and I was like, yo, this guy, as high as he is, as much as he got going on, because he was hot. This is when yeah. he's just off of Black Panther. Right. He's Black, you know, Avengers, and I'm like, mm. man, this guy is really like. Involved in the convo, he really wants That's to know it. what's going on. He really, he's really a nice guy, regardless, right. and he doesn't have to be. So, yeah. and I w- and if the ignorant me was like, he's weird for that. And then when I really thought about it before he passed, I was like, bro, he just. That's who he is. That's his spirit. Like you know what I mean. He was just and you, really, you have to be that way because sometimes yeah. you can get lost in his business. Man. I was about to say yeah. it's a rare spirit yeah. in this yeah. industry, and, that, and that's yeah. why, like, when, I, when me and Kevin met, uh, we were at an event, and I was speaking about you know that I got an award for. And after I spoke, man, like there was like a line of people like just waiting to talk to me, which is like, what? Like, mm-hmm. why you didn't talk to me? But I wanted to make sure that I talked to each and every person because I don't know what they wanted to say, what I wanted what I could say to them. Mm-hmm. And I was I was talking to one person, and the other person, and I was like, hey, don't I see you? Don't don't leave. I I felt it's very important because you don't know what someone's going through, man. And that's true. Time I, is of the essence. Like I, I use I use whatever I'm given to be a blessing. And then me and Kevin's been like cool. Ever since then, man. Is Facts. that because I'm gonna ask this? Is that because you've been in that sh- those shoes as the other person? Nah, just because I care about people. Yeah, okay. Man. Um, like I mean, I, I touched briefly. I lost my father to suicide in 2014. So for me, life is 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 so much important. So me right. taking a moment of time to talk to someone, yeah, not only helps me, but I can help that person. Whatever it may be, keep going. Don't st- like yeah. use me as an example. Like I've I felt many times, but I keep getting up. Because I understand, like, this is what I'm meant to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to stop. I don't care if it takes me 40 years to get to where I'm really supposed to get to. I'm not going to stop. That's, so. right. so that's big. He did do that. I, went, I was in that line. Mm-hmm. And then we got to talking, and somebody did come and budge. And he was like, yo, bro, don't go nowhere. Because yeah. they was talking about something. And then, yeah, we, we did. We had a whole convo. That's dope. Connected information. And, yeah, it's been what it's been. So I, respect that. I definitely appreciate that because you don't even know. But you've given me motivation and ideas and stuff that you said during your speech. And convos we had about being in control of your own destiny so yeah yeah that was Fire. dope and i appreciate yeah. that for sure but we'll get into what holler before we wrap up mm-hmm. basically keep two out keep two <laughs> in the pool one's gotta go gotta go mm-hmm. and since you know entertainment acting we're gonna keep on our actors you've got will smith mm-hmm. denzel washington Damn. Samuel Jackson. Oh wow, one's Samuel? gotta go. Samuel. Samuel's gotta go. Yeah, easy. That was easy for you. Um, that was really easy. <laughs> he's, nah, he's like, nah, he's like, Sam- oh, yeah, Samuel. Nah, nah, because Samuel's been in a lot nah, of nah, stuff. No, nah, Sam is 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 great. Like, I feel yeah. like, I feel like it'd be easier for me to get work with Sam than it would for me to work with Denzel and Will. Uh, just because it's like schedule wise, mm-hmm. yeah. but Denzel, I feel like Denzel is gonna bring the best out of you. And I met him, man, and he just like his spirit, like just like you talking about Chadwick, like his spirit is just like yo, he he's he's funny, he's real, and he says what he means in the sense of like he he's not just saying something to say it, like he's actually living by what he's saying and, and to you. And so that's important. And Will Smith is his energy is dope. I met him too, so his energy is is, is dope. And 
someone that I could definitely continue to learn to because he's grown from being a rapper to now being, you know, a whole definitely studio. <laughs> Definitely. Damn, that was easy. Okay, maybe one more. <laughs> maybe one more, because he, he blew. If you want to keep it on the... I, I had something. All right, go. Not, not even acting. Uh, just to keep it light. If you had a choice to... You had to get rid of... Well, yeah, you had to get rid of one of these. It would be either being really smart. I mean, no, being really funny, mm-hmm. being able to dance really good, <clears throat> or being able to uh, sing. Ooh. Uh, he loves dancing. No, let's, let's change it. <laughs> let's change it. You got to pick one to keep. One so to you keep. Get, you got to be the best singer in the world, best dancer, or a really fun, like the funniest singer. guy. Man, and we got how much time singer. we got left for shot? We got five, five right, minutes. Cool. We got five minutes five left. Five minutes left. Singer, man. I, you know, it's crazy. You losing the singing? No, I want to oh, sing. Keep, oh, yeah, okay. He wants to keep singing. I, I love singing, but I, I don't have the voice. Facts. And like, if I was to sing, I'd be in, I'd be in trouble, man. I was Same. gonna pick. I was gonna pick singing too. I say man. that too, bro. I swear, every I think that's. I got the moves. Like I got the moves. Yeah. I got this. We were at we, yo, no, no, we were at Floyd Mayweather's birthday party, and this dude did not leave. Light flex. Light yeah, light flex. flex. <laughs> he did not leave. I had two. I had, look, I had two and boots, he had the boots on. I had two boots on. Yo, as soon as we get there, we ain't had a drink yet. He's like, yo, I'm about to go to the dance floor, bro. He's got two boots on his feet, like <laughs> dancing Tim, in the Timberland boots. No. no. Recovery but, boots oh. for your feet. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had bunion surgery, so I was yeah, I was in two. And he did it, bro, yeah. in the boots, in the fly suit, yeah. hat with the boots on, like moving. Yeah. I'm like, this nigga's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm it, glad you didn't re-injure yourself. Bro, right, you know, he was, but he was moving swift. Like I, I couldn't believe it, bro. With that the was boots on. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I was doing a tootsie roll and everything. That's, Yo, that's epic. Bro, that's epic. he was killing I it. I spinning around. Like I was there. Yeah, so you already got some dance moves. That's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last one, last one, last one. Uh Michael B. Jordan. Mm-hmm. Uh Jamie Foxx. Mm-hmm. And don't sleep on him. Daniel Kalua. Kalua. From Get Out. Oh, keep, oh, keep, oh, keep two. Oh, okay. Keep two. Keep yeah, keep two. <sighs> Michael, Michael B. Jordan. And Queen of Slimmies and Queen of Slimmies who, who, as well. Who's the se- second one? Jamie, Jamie Foxx. Fox. And, 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 and Jamie Foxx. So you drop a Daniel? Yeah, Dan. Is it just because he's not there? No, no, no. He, it's not even like that. Talent nah, wise. Nah, he's dope. He's dope. No, nah, it's just for Jamie. Jamie, as far as the comedian side, he's going to bring, he's going he's yeah. to keep the, the, the set fun and light. And then Michael B. Jordan, like we've, we haven't worked, we've been on the wire together, but we haven't worked together. Yeah, and so yeah. I feel yeah. like that would be dope to work with, with my guy, with my boy, you know. Um, there it is. Daniel's yeah, dope, yeah. though, so I, I'm, you got to get out, <laughs> but yeah. you don't got to get out. Yeah. But, man, thank you, Mel. This has been a, a hell of an episode. Sure has. I, I appreciate it, man. Thank like you. I said, you're a big bro mentor to me, man. Nothing but blessings your way. Thanks for coming through to the lab. Thank you for I would me. like to also say thanks for being a, a role model. Facts. You know what I mean? You, I could just hear how you talk. and Doing it the right way. Seeing the stuff you do. Right. You're a role model to a lot of people, Thank whether you know it or not. Right. Uh and I'm hoping for the best, and we're going to be rooting for you for your next endeavors and everything you guys got going on. Definitely, man. So thank you guys for listening. This is another episode of The Lab. It's your yes, boy, sir. Kev. It's your boy, Joe. We got Melvin Jackson in the building, and we are out. We out.